Tony! Lance, how you doing? What's up, man? What are you doing here? Here to, Burton, to interview you. Huh? Let's go. God, um, money. <laughs> I wanted to be a commercial director, and while I was at school studying to be a commercial director, I figured out there were these artists called Storybird Artists, and since I was already making a living in the past as an artist, I thought, oh, it'd be great, okay, Storybird Artists. I went in with my tracing paper and I actually had like I had a board like you go to art school I had a big old like board with my tablet on it my drawing tablet my tracing paper my little pencil sharpener and my mark you know my whatever 10 set of colored markers because that's all I could afford um, and I show up and there's this guy named Duff Moses sitting there drawing and I and he's another artist rep by the same company same same agent and I look over and his stuff is like masterpiece and so I had to sit and draw next to him and he didn't have the big board he didn't have his 10 colors he had like 500 colors he had like a simple little tracing pad with his little blue pencil and his stuff was just like lay a line down it was perfect and I was sitting there sweating with my eraser drawing a line erasing and yeah, I just was just wanted to get through that day and and find a new career. But I made it through, and uh, insecurities come still, not nearly as much. And I just think the longer you do a job, no matter what it is, the less insecurities there are. I like to do quick thumbnails. And then, depending on the job, um, I'll do roughs. I doodle on paper. I always, I cannot, I've tried to take notes and uh, do thumbnails on my tablet, which I use a, um, a um, iPad Pro with Procreate, uh, but that's what I used to draw with now, but I cannot take notes on it. I just I haven't gotten to that. Then I'll go home and, uh, our thumbnails on paper, then I'll go home and draw my roughs out um, in a sequence, send those to the production office, get some sort of feedback, and then go on to finals. If um, I haven't done a color job in ages, but um, obviously color is always the last step. So once the colors predominantly on commercial jobs, agency, advertising jobs, yeah. So if I do those, that will be the very last step. And I don't like color. It's just bleh. I do a lot of um, uh, a lot of t may, um, main title sequences, and those seem to be a lot more than anything, much more hands-on and descriptive because they're very, a lot of them are very um, um, kind of abstract, symbolic images, which, you know, the director has very specific uh, frames in mind and transitions. And so those kind of jobs are much more one-on-one -on -one conversation and um, tweaking and finessing, often with color. Um, so yeah, every job's a bit different. I mean, I've had fun jobs where I did a music video with someone, an um, artist named Sade, and she sat and watched me draw, and I was so nervous. I couldn't draw because she's looking over my shoulder. Um, I've been stuck in closets drawing on a production office. <laughs> I've had to sit on the floor and draw. It's always funny because when people ask you what you do and you say, I, if like the longer I do it, when people ask me what I do, 
I used to say, I'm a storyboard artist. I draw frames that help the director tell the crew. And now I just say, they ask me what I do, and I say, I'm a storyboard artist. And I, I give a pause, just like, and they're like, oh, that, that's cool. Like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But uh, no, I, so it's kind of fun just, just seeing if they have any idea what it is. And then sometimes you get people, oh, that's awesome. You know, like I met some guy here recently that was a big storyboard artist fan, a fan of storyboard arts, our storyboards. And uh, yeah, I was shocked that he knew so much about the field. But yeah, most people in general have no idea you know, and it's, you tell them you're an artist, but your, your job title starts with story, so it really confuses them. And yeah, I'm like, yeah, maybe they think it's got something to do with animation, but yeah, most people, most people in the world have no idea what it is. It's funny, because I'm not really a, a director fan. I mean, I like certain movies, but I don't really follow directors. I mean, I don't, I can't even think of anybody, you know, I, all the big names, but I can't say that any of them inspire me. Um, yeah, I just like movies, and whoever's a good director, I'll follow them. Yeah, it's usually some silly comment, like, um, can you make him, can you, can you make that child four instead of five years old? Yeah, yeah, those are, those are much more difficult than, you know, can you make this car, you know, do a 360 and bounce off the wall and fly off the bridge and, you know, 20 people jump out of the way. A lot of I, I've had some people ask me, well, tell me they want to be a storyboard artist, and I'm always like open and eager to help someone get in the industry. And I, I think what it really takes to make it in this industry is a couple of things. Well, it's not that you don't have to be a really good artist. You can be a mediocre artist, but you have to know, you have to have a knowledge of how cameras work, how framing works, how um, how, how, like a sense of edit, uh, being an editor, how to link shots together, you know, and a lot of people learn that just from watching films, um, you know, a lifetime of watching stuff, you'll know it, but actually forcing yourself to sit down and do it, t you know, to draw things and put them in a sequence and how they edit together and, you know, and um, that's very important. Um, Drive and determination, yes. Yeah, you need to be able to, uh, you know, a lot of it now over the past probably five to ten years is a work from home. So you have to be self-motivated. You have to be, um, you know, you have to get up and sometimes put your pants on and go to work <laughs> at your own desk. But um, you have to get up motivated to do it and, and turn in the work that is needed for the day. I don't know what my best compliment, my favorite compliment is, these are perfect. Um, best compliment, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, well, yeah, sometimes, well, no, okay, I can think of a couple of things. One, one is when someone says, that's exactly how I saw it. That's, that's always kind of fun. And then one commercial director, <laughs> he just, yeah, after I worked with him the first time and he was, after he saw my first round of boards, he's like, where have you been all my life? Hmm. Really? Uh, hmm. I have many of those, but I don't know which ones I can tell or not tell. Well, I could tell any of them which ones I should tell. It, I forget what year this was, but you know, my rep called me up and told me I was going to do a Kanye West video, and I had to go down to Orange County from Los Angeles to a studio down there and meet Kanye. But anyway, it was for his graduation album. And so I got down to Orange County, and the director's there, but Kanye's not. And so they tell me to go back up to uh, Hollywood, to Kanye's house, to meet him. So anyway, I drive back up to Hollywood, and I'm like right down the street from where they told me his house was. And I get a phone call from his, from his assistant, and he's like, yeah, Kanye went to the record plant. Uh, 
he just left the house. He went to the record plant. He wants you to meet him there. So I'm like, oh, God, okay. <laughs> so I turn around, go to the record plant, which is like this recording studio in Hollywood. And I go in, and Kanye's there, and he's meeting with his, like, uh, the guy who's setting up his stage stuff. A really nice young guy. And uh, we're in a massive recording studio. You know, it's got the board and the, the microphones and the massive speakers. You know, everything's black, cool lighting. And so they're chatting a bit, and then this guy leaves. So it's just me and Kanye, and Kanye starts telling me about his, you know, his two new songs that end up being on this. I forget what songs they are, but they're both like top ten hits, I think. But they're well-known songs. And so Kanye's telling me about these songs and you know how he wants to make music videos for him and what his, his ideas are. So he's like, he's like, <laughs> he wants me to hear the songs. So he goes to the the board and turns on these songs, which haven't been released yet. Um, oh man, I wish I could think of the name of them. But anyway, um, so he starts like singing and dancing with the songs, singing, and somewhere in the world there's somebody who would be very happy, somebody who would pay millions of dollars to be sitting in my seat right now listening. And uh, yeah, it ended up being a really cool job, and um, Kanye was super nice to me, super normal really nice guy but yeah I've, I mean my career has been filled with those kind of like interesting moments Lance thanks so much for doing this interview for me I really appreciate your time you're welcome it's very valuable <laughs> <laughs> um, wait what's phrase that question again <laughs> Did <laughs> I look at the camera? All right, you. No, no are you or the camera? Look at, me. Uh, look at you. Yeah, I know it's tough. Yeah. Huh? I did it myself. No. Yeah. Oh, shit, I almost walked away with that.